Hi guys, this is Damodog82. We're back with some more building the uh, Dreadnought here. Uh, I thought this would benefit from having some anti-aircraft guns. Um, so for this one, I think I actually want to use um, some APS ones in instead of the um, simple weapon ones. So let's go ahead and get that started. Now, you'll see a pole that I put here that is made out of metal beams. I'll show you what that's for here in a sec. So I want this to fit into a 3x3 in this pole here. That's going to give us the depth of the area we have to work in. Basically, I believe it's from the deck here down to the, uh, the wood down here. Now, these aren't going to be sitting around on top of wood. I'm probably going to have them enclosed in a, uh, a metal uh, barbette. So we're going to try to give these things a little bit of protection. So, uh, for this anti-aircraft gun, uh, I've already came up with a shell that I want to use. And it's this guy right here. It's going to be a 50 millimeter, And we're going to go with uh, 20 segments for the shell itself. I should note real quick that uh, I accidentally told you guys the rug number at shell segments for the main guns in the first video. That was actually meant to be 20, not 12. I apologize for that. Anyway, let's move on. So yeah, this is going to be an explosive timed fuse. Uh, I have experimented with using timed frag, and I've experimented using a combination of flak and frag, and several other things, and this seems to be the one that just worked the best. So we're just going to roll with it. All right, so let's get started building the cannon. And we're just going to come straight up like this. And right about here, I believe, is where the top of the dead will start. Now, just to, uh, I don't think I told you guys about this the first time around, so I should probably mention it to you now. A quick way just to measure real quick is just to put a couple of beams up like so. And that should give us 11 meters right there. That's how we know the depth. All right, so let's get back to this. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of armor here on top. Now, when you're armoring up stuff, something to always keep in mind is try to think to yourself, where is the explosive, or where are the explosions going to go? That's what I try to do. Explosions like to go into about any nook and cranny that they can. That's why they're so good tearing things up, especially if they're unarmored. So we're going to do a few of those, and let's see here, we're going to do this. These belt fat autoloaders, uh, we're going to be using those because they have a much faster sustained rate of fire. Alright, let's get a firing piece on this guy. I just want it to be recessed just a little bit back to make it look a little bit nicer. And we're going to go with the AA mantlet, like that. And we want this, like I said earlier, we want 50 millimeter, two barrels. And let's see here, we are going to want... Something like that. Or evacuator will give us a little bit of a bonus to the cooling barrel for accuracy and the muzzle brake for uh, recoil reduction because rapid fire APS has lots of problems with uh, recoil. And a pinch, something like this could probably work as a C whiz. I don't know how effective it would be. You probably want something that would fire a little bit more faster, but we're not talking about sequences right now. We're just talking about uh, APS or uh, a uh, anti-aircraft gun. But in a lot of cases, uh, your CUS and anti-aircraft guns, they can do the same job in pretty effectively. So something to keep in mind. So I want some of these done with regular loaders. Uh, reason being so that this will actually keep firing even though uh, they will run out of ammo at some point. Uh, I think I'm going to go right about there and... Yeah, that'll do. So the reason why I'm tetrising it this way 
is these will all be able to be connected together just by sticking to the coil that's that are going down the middle here. That used to be you wouldn't want to do something like this because having the ammo intake directly on your auto loader wasn't a very good thing to do and it would really slow down the loading process. Not so nowadays. You can slap this on the auto loader or the clip and it should work just as well either way. So let's go ahead and add some clips to these. And we're going to add the ammo intakes. There we go. And we want a few up here as well. Now, remember the reason why I'm having these up here. I don't think I explained that, but I'll just go ahead and explain it. Um, the regular auto loaders are because when you're using belt fed auto loaders, when they run out of shells, they will stop firing. This is just to make sure that it's still pushing some deck out while the, um, the belt fed loaders are reloading. So we're going to slap a few more recoil absorbers on here. Okay, we will give this a few moments to load up. Seems like we don't quite have enough cooling. I think I could fix that. Really? Okay. I guess we'll need a little bit more cooling than that. Oh, one thing I forgot to note is that these shells will be using the um, tracers. Uh, with the tracer, it will make it uh, more accurate with rapid fire guns. Uh, the tracers uh, are great at improving accuracy for things like that. Uh, you can also pick the tracer color. You could basically make whatever you want, but red's perfectly fine for what we're wanting to do. I think way back in the day, they used to be all white. Okay, need a few more of these. That looks good. Now let's see how this is doing on getting loaded. That looks like we are loaded. Actually, it's still loading. Yeah. Okay. We will just keep doctoring up this turret just a little bit, to make it look nicer. While we wait on that, no big deal. All right. Let's see here. Let's do this. This. All right. Now then. this. I don't expect these to last a whole hell of a long time. Uh, something I should note though about these, um, the belt fed auto loaders, no, that's not what I'm trying to show people. Go in here, uh, we look at the single auto loader. Material cost of 240. Belt fed auto loader 600. So that's something to take in consideration when building these turrets as well. I don't worry too much about cost, but I know there's a lot of people who do. So just something to be aware of. Okay. Are we completely loaded up now? Shells available, 702 out of 816. I guess it's still loading. That's fine. Well, while it's doing that, uh, I think I want to armor up these inner bits a bit more.
We'll come back to that here in a little bit. That's something that can be very, very frustrating about using belt fed auto loaders is the reload time. And I know that's uh, probably going to be an issue for some people out there. I've known a few people to try to stagger the reload on the belt fed auto loaders to try to make it to where um, when some are reloading, some are or, uh, unloading. I haven't personally messed with it a whole lot myself, but I do know it's possible. For these um, casemate guns, I want to do a AP frag head. Or, I'm sorry, AP frag shell for these. So we're probably going to have to come back and find a way to armor those up, that's fine. And I think I want the barbette for the anti-aircraft guns to start about here. Since it fits neatly in a 3x3, we can just... That's not 3x3, my bad. We should just be able to drop it down into this when it's done. There we go. Did I make that too short? I just want to double check. Nope. Nothing wrong with double checking your work. Mirror lane. Here we go. Now this thing should be loaded by now. 816 shells. Awesome. Alright, let's make sure that we have the right settings on this. We want this to be a point 0.1. No. Click one. There we go. And I'm gonna read if I was getting okay. You're in 70.5. Okay, so I'm going to spawn in a plane. Uh, I think I'll do one from the Dominion Adama. I want to make sure that everything is turned off. It needs to be turned off. And uh, we'll use the Dead Tongue Fighter. It's actually a pretty quick plane, so I think it'll be a good standard to try to judge things by here. I don't know why it's like shooting down like that, but... Actually, that was pretty good. Uh, went through about... Well, actually, not that many. Okay. Let's try a different plane, then. I got one here that's a little bit faster. This guy is a little bit quicker. I'm thinking this might work better at a closer range. 
So let's set that real quick. I think I wanted to have a go about there, and we don't want it shooting at any surface vessels, so we'll put that at 20. Yeah, it's definitely not got some blocks off of it. I might increase that range, but I think this is what we're looking for. Come on, you bastard. Yeah. Better train this at maybe a thousand meters, I think. And we will want this to be working on channel three. Oh. Let me go ahead and spell it, but I can just flip this guy over to three, two, so. There we go. Yeah, it's not gonna blocks here, we don't, man. It seems like it goes through those shells too fast, which is awesome. I'll let it do one more pass and call her good. Oh yeah, it is definitely chewing that plane up. Excellent. Okay. I think we can be happy with this guy then. All right, let's see here. So logic mode. We'll save over that. And we will place them like so. I think that works. Yeah. And let's see if we can find a good place to put some more. I want them about right here, I think. I think that looks good. And we can just replace the blocks right underneath them, like so. Good deal. And... There we go. Um... Actually, yeah, let's move them back like one further back. Make sure that's lined up correctly before I slap it down there. Uh, yeah, right about there. All right. So we're going to want to prefab this shell that I've created. We're going to use the old prefab tool. Oops, that's the wrong one. Yeah, let's see here. Where do we want to put this little monster? Um, Seems like a good spot to me. And while we're in here, I'm gonna go ahead and put together a shell for the um, secondary guns. So I want to go with a I 
think I accidentally put flak on one of those. We can go back and change it. There we go. And I think I want to go for lighter angle frag cone. And these will be 150 millimeter shells. I went with a length of 10 because that's the, uh, that's the amount of, uh, cutting out my words here. Alright, so it's a caliber of 150 and a max shell length of 1.8. If we take 1.8 and we divide it by 150, you're gonna get over 10 segments. So that's why we're going with 10, because we know it'll fit in there. Actually, let's, what is the velocity on the shell? I think I wanna add more frag. Maybe one more. Yeah, that looks good. These don't have to be extremely fast. Okay. So, let's go ahead and... Oops, okay. Make sure we're on the right one. Yeah. So we're just gonna use Control c and Control v 2 to copy these to the rest. I think we still have some local web controllers to place, that's no big deal. Yeah, we need to see where all the blocks are before we start doing that. Okay. Our mirror line back down. And there. Looks good. If this were a quest for neater craft, though, I would probably be doing a few things different. Uh, I probably have a lot more EMP protection. I mean, you could probably use this for quest for neater if you wanted to, but um, EMP is just going to front really easy because it's just not built to handle EMP. To me, the Nana doesn't have it. a little weird when you're trying to do it around at the turrets. Um, I'll show you what you're You see there's a bit of a gap there. Let's go ahead and put some metal in that. Daniel loves his metal. Alright. Around these turret necks, I usually like to go like that, and basically we're trying to keep the pattern underneath it by doing that. And I believe there are some space. Yep. There we go. Now let's do it here on the other side. Alright, so now that we've got that all in here, I'm just going to show you guys something here real quick. Uh, let's pop that turret. And as you can see, we made sure that the, st the uh, pattern here stayed consistent. Alright, let's bring the turret back. There we go. 
And let's do the same thing for this other side. This one the same way. Looks like we need two meter. And uh, something to keep in mind when you're placing one of these uh, partial beams is you see those little squares that are on the left hand side of the marker there? Uh, the black bit is always going to be on the opposite end of that. Just something to help, uh, help you guys remember where the pattern is on these. Uh, oops. I was doing some weapons testing the other day. Okay. We about got this. something you couldn't do before we had uh, control Z. Funny thing about that control Z though, it took forever to get into the game, but uh, there were a lot of other building games that actually had it. Just some food for thought. with it. And I want to put down... Actually, one thing I forgot to check real quick. Just to make sure that these are loading the correct shell. Yes, that seems to be the case. Good. Never mind. That's all good. Anyway, like I was saying, I want to put down a fire control computer. And... Really? It's like I was building on a turret there. Okay. Alright, let's see... Actually, that's not too bad there. I'm kind of tempted to rip this one out, because I think it's going to get in the way of that main gun. Yeah, let's just go ahead and take it out. That's no big deal. Uh... Yeah, we'll just let that drop. And we'll go ahead and pull that and that. So I'm trying to think of what would be a good name for this. 
I imagine there's going to be a few guys down in the comments suggesting it. That's fine. We'll just have to see what I come up with. I want to come all the way down with it. I think I do. Let's how that just doesn't curve at all, so... Yeah. That's a little better. I don't want that to be like a single block there. Yeah. That's better. And I think I want this to be like a gradual slope towards the back. So let's bring it back up and there. Alright, now let's see. Oh yeah, that's a bit better clearance. Yeah, I can love that. Alright. What I want it to do up here is we're just going to come straight back with this. So this might need some PID work at some point. I see that because it's probably going to get more and more heavier on the top of this as we progress through building it. That shouldn't take very long though. I'll try to come back with some decorations and try to clean this up back here and make it look a little nicer. Could I do this? Actually, that might just be easier to do. Yeah, let's just do that then. We'll put three meter beams in here instead. Yes. Let's do 
can never really tell uh, which one of these is pointing, or which end is going to be pointing off when you place the block. It's kind of a Sorry, people in the water there. Okay. Superstructure is coming along pretty nicely. I think I want just a little more armoring behind these casemate guns. See if I can get some idea what to put between the anti aircraft guns. I can't seem to think of anything at the moment. Maybe it'll come to me after a while. And that's better. I think. Alright. Fill command, get that filled in. I don't expect that bit to take much damage there, so I'm not going to worry too awful much about it. I 
Alright, so we're gonna put in some air pumps in here. Oops. Looks like I missed a few spots. Up here with the decking. Let's fix that real quick. as to if I want to add any uh, more weapons to this thing. I think I might. German-based faction for Dominion of Dema. Which I was able to talk uh, Heitzmeister into uh, helping me record a few things for that faction. I want to do like a little lore video for all the factions, and I'm trying to find people with the right... with accents that fit the faction that they would be narrating, more or less. So IMark 3 is going to be doing um, Kingdom Windsor, which is essentially Great Britain. Uh, Heitzmeister, I am going to have him do uh, the Gothic Reich. And I might just end up doing uh, the um, Republic of Free States myself. I don't know yet. Just something I've been thinking about. I still need someone who can do like like a French accent. I haven't been able to find anyone to do that yet. I think I might have came up with someone just now, but I'll have to see what he says tomorrow. But I think he'll do it. So what I'm just trying to do here is to give these letters just a little bit of narrative 
make it look like um, it's actually give a shit about the people using them. <laughs> I think it's looking pretty good. We're getting very close to getting finished with this. So next time what I want to try doing is put in some towers. Uh, probably get back behind turret number two here, which will be on top of the bridge. Probably have uh, some kind of funnel system here. Don't know yet. And uh, the rear tower will be right about here. So that's what we will be working with next time. So until then, I'd like to thank you all for watching. This has been Damon Dog 82. Have yourselves a hell of a day and keep your hammer high. Later.